everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees wishing all of you a happy new year and a huge thanks to all of our hosts that hosted Bees this year and a big warm welcome to all of our future hosts. Uh, we see that we have a lot of new hosts that are joining our program, so thank you so much. Um, in this little video that we are producing, um, I wanted to kind of capture all of the best content um, of the year. Uh, we produced over 30 educational videos um, with over about 40 minutes of content. And you can view all of the full length videos on our YouTube channel. Um, but this little montage or highlight reel is um, pulling out just all of the Mason Bee content and um, teaching you about our Mason Bees. Um, so visit our blog to learn more about solitary bees, safe gardening tips, follow our Facebook page because we'll always be posting videos on there, or visit our YouTube channel to see all the full snippets. Um, and we just want to welcome everyone to our bee family, um, whether you host from us or whether you raise your own bees. Um, we are super excited to teach and educate. And just a little side, side note I'm so excited about, I can't tell you which publications, but we have two huge feature articles coming out in early spring of next year and some national publications to teach more people about solitary bees. I'm so excited about that because that is what we want. We want to teach more people about these incredible pollinators. So enjoy this video. If you have any questions, you're always able to reach out to us at info at rentmasonbees.com and please follow our newsletter. You can get that, that access on our website um, for all of our up-to-date information. Have a great New Year's and thank you for hosting bees. Bye. I'll tell you a little bit about solitary bees. Um, when I first became a host, I had no idea what a mason bee was or a leaf cutter bee or even what the word solitary bee meant. Well, it means what it means. Solitary, alone, by themselves. They don't work in a hive. Every female solitary bee lays their own eggs, gathers their own foods, find their own nest. And most solitary bees, 90% of the bee population are solitary bees. And they, most of them live in the ground. Some will find natural holes. Um, leaf cutter and mason bees do not chew wood. That's a big question we get all the time. They don't chew wood. Those are the carpenter bees. Um, mason um, use mud and leaf cutter bees use tiny little pieces of leaves that doesn't damage the, the plant um, to build their nests. And you can look at our blog um, to look at some of those images and pictures. But solitary bees are incredible pollinators um, that don't have a hive to protect, so they're not aggressive, they don't sting, they just are go about their business pollinating. Um, so now bee toads have 1600 bees, and as you can see, it is super busy and active. Um, these girls are busy pollinating, and then what they're doing is they're finding a hole, and they're putting mud, pollen, and a baby, and then they repeat that process five to eight times, and then they plug that hole with mud, when you see a mud plug, that means there's anywhere from five to eight babies in that hole. And each one of these girls will lay about 15 eggs in their lifetime. Um, they die off within six to eight weeks, but those baby cocoons will turn, those babies will turn into cocoons and then they will hibernate over winter. And then the following spring, we will send you new bees. And then we also send our farmers bees. So it's an amazing process. And I just wanted to show you how friendly these little girls are. Don't even bother me while I'm standing here. And I encourage all of you to study your bees and uh, enjoy them. Thank you. I love watching these little bees up close. And I want you guys to take note of how much pollen is on some of their bodies. Like you literally can see them completely covered in yellow pollen, which is really fascinating. Cause as you know, they belly flop onto those flowers and get pollen all over their bodies. today and talk about your mason bee block and where we're at in the cycle of our mason bee season. Um, depending on when you got your bees and when you released your bees will determine when you're done um, with the mason bee season and then you take out the bee block. Um, we definitely want to take them out when they're completely done flying um, or if all your holes are filled up and there's no more space for them to lay any eggs is uh, you're going to take your white tubes out and you're going to very, very carefully remove your nesting block. Now it looks like I still have a couple of little bees flying around. So for demo purpose, I'll put this back until they're done. But what you're going to do when you see no bees, no more activity, you're going to very gently take your nesting block out and you're gonna face it with the holes upright 
I've got your block right here, little guy, little girl. Um, you're gonna gently rest this upright in your garage or in a den or somewhere where they can be safe. You just can put them right back in your shipping box that we ship to you. Today, we are gonna take a sneak peek inside your mason bee nesting block to see what your baby bees are up to right now. Where are they at? Are they the larva? Have they eaten all the pollen? Have they formed their silken cocoon? All right, are you guys ready to see what's going on inside your mason bee block? Um, we please ask that our hosts don't cut the strap um, because then you're not able to safely ship them back to us and they can definitely get damaged. They're super fragile. Um, but we did this for the purpose just to show all of our wonderful hosts what your baby bees are doing right now. All right, let's very carefully take a look. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at all the babies. Wow. All right. So these guys are in the larvae state. They're eating all the pollen that mom worked so hard to gather for her babies. Um, but yeah, let's go take a look and see what's happened five days after we opened up our bee block. Okay, let's go. All right. Let's take a look inside and see what's going on with our baby bees five days later. You can see that these mason bees have plugged up each hole with their mud that protects their babies inside. All right, let's take a look. Oh my gosh. You guys, there's already cocoons forming. Only five days after our first video, they have spun a silken cocoon. Oh, there's a couple of larvae still. Wow, that's fascinating, only five days. So these silken cocoons are super hardy and durable. Part three of our discovery of how our little baby bees develop into full grown bees. So let's take a look. Last time I, there were some cocoons and a couple of larvae. Ah, there we go. That's how quick they work, you guys, it's amazing. So these, they have all formed cocoons now. So as you can see, they've all formed cocoons. That looks like that one. Wow, there you go. All the larvae have formed cocoons. And now they will grow into full grown bees in those cocoons. And in the fall, we will ask you to mail your nesting block back to us. We'll notify you and let you know. So don't do it until you see the emails and all the, all the information that we send you. Uh, harvesting um, over 3 million mason bee cocoons this season. And uh, go ahead and start up the machine. So as you can see, each block is being pressed out and all the cocoons are coming down. All the debris from the blocks are being extracted out of the box. And you can see down here, everything is coming out of the blocks. That includes the pollen mites, the mud, the Houdini fly larvae, all of this is coming out. But as you can see, we also have a lot of really great cocoons. Fire station, it's really important for us to sterilize every single nesting block that comes in. And as you can see, we move it very slowly over the flames to go through every single cell of your nesting block. That eliminates all the pollen mites and the fungus and any other predators that may be in there. This is one cup of bleach to 20 gallons of water. And we dump our dirty cocoons into the bee bath and we take our handy dandy cat litter scoop and we mix them up and we wash them and we rinse them. For about 15 minutes, they soak in this bleach bath. And then we take them and we put them onto our conveyor belt to rinse the final cocoons with fresh plain water. We spread them out on our conveyor belt. I'll get a couple of scoops here so you can see it. And, then, and they will come out on our drying rack. After our bees get a bath, we put them on the drying rack and the drying rack dries all of the bees overnight under a large fan. And then we bring the drying rack out the next day and we hand pick through millions of bees, all the ones that are not viable. 
So we have our volunteer Janet helping us today, and we have Michelle helping us pick through all of these cocoons to pick out all the non-viable bees. So if you see a cocoon that you can see through, so if you can see this one up close, these, these cocoons are not viable. Something got to these bees and they didn't survive and they didn't make it. So we literally pick out all the cocoons that are not healthy anymore to make sure that next year you're getting healthy, strong bees and that our farmers are getting healthy. All right, we've now handpicked through millions of mason bee cocoons to get out all the non-viable bees. They are nice and clean cocoons now, and now we're gonna put them in winter storage. We have a walk-in refrigerator where we store our bees, and we put them at about 37 degree temperatures where they'll sit here and hibernate over winter, and then we will release them the following spring. We will send them back to gardeners and to our farmers to pollinate crops. Thank you for watching our video on our Mason Bee Fall Harvest. As you can see, there's a lot of little pieces that go into cleaning and sterilizing and making sure that we return healthy bees back into our environment every spring. Um, if you are interested in becoming a part of our program, not hassling with cleaning your own cocoons, then you can rent a Mason Bee Kit from us. It includes a black house, a nesting block that's sterilized and clean, and 50 to 60 Mason Bee cocoons that we will put in a PVC pipe. We'll put a little piece of tape on it, and then when you get your kit, you put it and hang it in a sunny spot, take the tape off, and that's all there is to it. And then in September, you just mail your nesting block back to us, and again, they'll go through the Mason Bee harvesting and cleaning, and we'll take care of all of your bees for you. So if you ever have any questions, give us a call. We have lots of videos online to learn about mason bees, to learn about leaf cutter bees, um, and about all our pollinators and how to take great care of them. So give us a call if you have any questions, or pop us an email at info at rentmasonbees.com, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Happy pollinating. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Guess what? Our t-shirts are in just in time for Christmas and we're so excited to share them with all of you. We listened to your feedback. We decided to print two of our top picks this year. So we have the belly flopping pollinators. We have the Mason bee host. And the best part is you get to teach people about solitary bees and Mason bees with our statistics on the back. They're incredible statistics about our, our Mason bees and their pollination skills. All right, that's a wrap on this year. Uh, we appreciate you all watching our Mason Bee Highlight Reel. Um, if you are interested in joining our program, please pre-order your bees. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we do have some big publications coming out next year where I know a lot of people will be ordering bees. Um, so if you wanna reserve your bees for 2022, you can visit our website at our store and um, order either the Mason Bee Kit or a leaf cutter kit or the pollinator package that comes with both spring mason bees and summer leaf cutter bees. Uh, we hope you all have a great New Year's and we'll see you next year. Bye.